Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in the first Berserker. We're going to start by optimizing Windows. After that, we're going to look at your Radian or NVIDIA parameter. And at the end, we're going to optimize the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture. Capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode honestly is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power uh back then uh, we were recommending to use the best performance but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now let's go to the NVIDIA app. The first thing that I want to recommend, uh, I'm not a huge fan, honestly, of the um overlay so nvidia overlay i really recommend to deactivate this one sometimes it's causing issue like stuttering you're losing some fps with it so i really recommend to deactivate it also we're gonna go to the control panel i'm gonna show you some optimization that you can do so we're gonna go to the manage 3d setting first so the first thing that you should definitely activate it is your low latency mode make sure this one is at on Another thing that I recommend is your power management mode. This one, pretty much the same thing than the, the, the one from Windows. Make sure that you're using normal. Don't use the maximum performance. I'm getting also better boost clock, more FPS with it. And the last one is your shader cache size. By default, your cache will be a driver default like this. And normally it's four gig. Uh, I recommend to start with 10 if you don't have a lot of space on, on your computer. And if you have a lot of space, go with 100 gig. Honestly, it's a game changer for your cache size. Uh, you're gonna struggle less with stuttering and also that your game need to recompile and stuff like that. If you install a lot of game, uh, this one can be very good for you. Now let's go to change resolution. The last one, really important to make sure that first of all, that you're selecting the uh, monitor, uh, that uh, first of all, you're using the native resolution of your monitor and also super important to have a proper refresh rate over there. Uh, by default, sometimes when you just change your monitor, it will be at 60 Hertz. Uh, so depending on the type of monitor that you buy, 144, 240, make sure that you're selecting this one. This option also, you can change it on Windows or your Radian driver if you have a Radian car. So no problem with that. The last one is your G-Sync. If you want to activate your G-Sync, yeah, really important to select the monitor. It needs to be compatible and you will enable over there. Uh, I'm not using G-Sync me. I always unlock my FPS because I want the lowest input lag. But if you don't like those steering line, definitely activate your G-Sync over there. This is pretty much it for the NVIDIA parameter. Now let's go to the Radeon one. So now for Radeon card, we're going to go to settings display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. 
After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile, so don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluid motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game, but this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one. This one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness a slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty, so this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver, and I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort, so you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now inside of the game, so we're going to start by the screen mode. Make sure that you're playing full screen. Uh, it's the best way to have more, most of your FPS and less input lag. Make sure that you're playing native with your resolution. I don't use the frame limits uh, in the game. I'm using the one from NVIDIA. I like my FPS at 237 because I have a 240 Hertz monitor. I want to stay in my G-Sync range. So I always do minus 3 FPS to make sure that it happens. Uh, I don't use the screen shake, uh, too much noise when I'm playing the game, but it's a question of preference. It doesn't change your FPS. So now let's go to the gr uh, graphic quality. So first of all, shadow quality, go something between low and medium. Uh, I, it's taking too much resources. It's, pro it's like 3% for each bracket. At off, honestly, the game looks very flat, but if you're struggling, you have a pretty old computer, definitely shadow, go with off or low. If not, go with medium. Anti-aliasing, I just stat medium. Again, if you're using DLSS or FSR, it doesn't apply. Uh, so, uh, and if you don't use that, definitely go with medium. Render distance, medium is a good between a good balance between both. At long, you will lose like six percent in your FPS. It's pretty crazy. So, medium is pretty good. Texture, if you have eight gig of VRAM, go with max. Six gig I, four gig medium, and less than four gig, go with low. Post-processing, I recommend to go with low. The game looks very blurry with it, so you're going to save a nice 5 to 6% in your FPS. 
and the game will be uh, a lot more clear. Effect, I recommend to go with medium. It's a lot of drop when you're going at high or even max, so I'm not a fan of it. Go with medium. Vegetation, shading, mesh, go with medium. You're going to gain a nice 6%. And honestly, you will have a pretty decent image versus like just high, and uh, you optimize your game uh, very well with those settings reflection i recommend to go between medium and low it really depends it sometimes it can tank your fps so if you see that your reflection is tanking too much um your computer definitely test low because this one uh, can be a bit tricky volume matrix medium is a good uh, balance i and max uh, you're gonna lose like Max to I, you're going to save 6%. I to uh, medium, you're going to save 5%. So this one is pretty huge. Ambient inclusion, go with between low and medium. Uh, again, if you go with off, the game looks very flat. My recommendation to have a decent image quality and optimize it, go with medium. Anisotropic filtering, go with I. Environmental interaction, if your computer is very old, it can be uh, tricky, but honestly, it's running well, so you can definitely go with on with this one. Motion blur, I just deactivated. I don't like this effect in any game. In the advanced parameter, so first of all, I, I'm playing DirectX 12 to make sure that I have the DLSS and frame generation. So if you have an RTX card, definitely go DLSS, go with quality. Uh, you can expect a nice boost, like 8 to 10%. I don't recommend to go lower than that. The game looks blurry, so quality is good. Frame gen, if you want to add a nice 40% boost in your FPS, depending on if you're struggling to run or not the game. If you don't have an RTX card, you have FSR 2 that you can use. Uh, this setting, like I said, it's apply when you're using DirectX 11. If you're struggling with an old PC or you have an old uh, Radeon card, definitely you can test that if you want. And uh, the AMD Cacao, uh, so for the ambient occlusion, I recommend you use it. It's pretty decent, honestly. So this definitely go with on with this one. And the last one is the upscaling technique from Intel if you want to use it. Uh, it's a little bit better than FSR 2, honestly, because FSR now, you can use FSR 3 and even FSR 4. Uh, so definitely, you can test it if you don't have an RTX card. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my guide of the, the first Berserker. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.